Hello and welcome back to the Pathfinder Kingmaker Alpha. So last time we chased after a rival, we beat up his henchman, but we did not uh, manage to actually catch him and it looks like he probably got kidnapped by kobolds. So we'll probably see him later. Now I was thinking about what to do. We could head to uh, Thornford um, or we could head to Nettles Crossing. Both of these are all right places to go. The reason I was considering going to Nettles Crossing is we had that vision in the last episode as well. So it could be interesting to see what's going on over there. But where I think we should go is I think we should go back to Oleg's. Now, why do I think we should go back to Oleg's trading post? Well, we're running out of rations and it's a free place to rest. So it seems like it could be a good place to go. So that's where I'm going to go first. We're going to go there. We're going to go buy some rations with some of the reward that we've got. Like some of the goods and we're going to sell some of our swords. Do we want to fight enemies? Um, we're at full health. So yeah, we'll fight. Yeah, it will also probably get rid of our fatigue if we rest in a proper place. Because we won't have to have people, you know, out hunting and things. We'll see, though. What have we got up here? Skeletons. Ooh, we haven't seen that, those yet. Um, Right, so I'm going to charge after that one. I'm going to send Amira off to charge after the other one. Along with uh, Jathail. Uh, Regnar is going to attack the same one as them. And Lindsay is going to... See, I want to try something. I'm going to use Cure Light Wounds on the skeleton. There we go. There's a new ske There's another skeleton. Okay. That's fine. Please use Cure... That, that, that didn't do anything. Oh, it missed. I see. Um, we'll back off then. Let's see. What else do we want to do? Well, given we might have more fights, I think we're just going to attack. So we're going to attack that one as well. Um, do we want to have deadly aim on? I'm going to check whether we're hitting or not. Because if we're not hitting, I might turn deadly aim off. Let's have a look here. Jethael missed. Wait, where is us? We, we, we're missing. Okay, so deadly aim. Let's turn that off. That'll, that'll give us a higher chance to hit. So hopefully that'll work. We're now attacking this one. Okay. We hit. There we go. It's still reduced because it's piercing damage, but... I think actually hitting is probably a valuable thing at this point. Jathail, um, you have a lot of um, like touch spells we could use. We could use like um, inflict light wounds. But we also have all of these. Okay. Um, let's try. Try. I just want to see. Does judgment healing healer, or does it hurt her? Let's have a look here. I can does. Well, have we seen her there? I suppose he hasn't taken any damage, therefore can't heal. It's not hurting her, so I guess it, it means that that healing's fine. It must be from external sources her healing will hurt her. Anyway, we're still gaining experience, which is nice. Uh, it's been a while since we leveled up, though. So I wonder when we're going to level up next. Can we see that on our character sheet? Um, Yeah, we can see it. So she's not going to level up for a while. Oh, we're all in exactly the same experience. Okay. Oh, I assume the red, that, yeah, fatigue lowers your dex and strength. I see. Okay, but it's for, ours is permanent and hers is 20 seconds. So, fatigue, her fatigue must come from her rage. Our fatigue's probably from hunting. That'd be my guess. I'm assuming because we weren't resting during our rest time and we were hunting, that was, yeah, that, that makes a little bit sense. Okay. Uh, looking at our health, I may just run from combat from now on. Like, just until we get some more rations. We'll see, though. We're still heading up to Oleg's, right? Uh, yeah, hopefully we can just head straight there. Take seven hours. Okay, we're likely to run into something, is my guess, but we'll see. Uh, let's evade. If we've successfully evaded, then let's go. That's fine. I wonder if we go back there, whether we still have to fight it. I assume we do, because it's still on the board. That's possible. Yeah. Okay. Well, back in this place. Let's go see what we can do. Okay, so it's just us. So this is a place of rest permanently, but looks bit. Oh, hello. Who are you? That's Oleg, right? Listen here. There is a thing. Since you have dispatched bandits with such skill, maybe you can help us with another problem. There's a feral swine living in the here in the woods. Not even a swine. A real boar. Big like a bear and wicked like a devil. Locals call him Tusk Gutter. So many hunters have lost their 
limbs are alive to him. Veckel Benzin has found his lair and went to kill the beast, but came back with one leg. He's put a bounty on the boar's head, but looks like there are no heroes bold enough to try and get it. Maybe you could rid us of this monster. I understand this guy's accent changes each time, but I keep forgetting what it is, so. But I know that it's changed. Anyway, that's fine. It's just a, it's a character quirk of his. Amiri livens up. Hey, but we're better than those local wussies, right? Want to bet I can chop off the snout of this tusk gust gutter in a single swing? Come on, see for yourself. Well, you did crit those people before. Um, yeah, let's go kill it. A Mary gives you a wide grin and slaps your shoulder. Right, that's the way. I like it. Let's do it. Okay, so you got to help a Mary kill the tusk uh, kill tusk gutter. That's fine. Guests from rest of arrive, Commander. Kristen has men. They have some news for you. That's really good. Okay. Uh, I do want to have a look at your goods, though. Uh, I want to sell you pretty much everything we have. So, let's see. Uh, does he have a... He does not have a limit on money, so... Yeah. That means that it is 100% worth selling absolutely everything we have to him. Like, if we're not going to use it, sell it. And we're not going to use any of this stuff, because it's all... Completely and utterly garbage. I might keep the apple. I'm not sure what fruit is used for, but... You know. We'll, we'll sell it. Uh, we'll keep the necklace fragment. We might as well sell some of these. Yeah. Wolf pelt could be made into a warm cloak or blanket. Okay. We'll keep it for just now, then. That's a lot of money we're making. I would like camping supplies, I think. Let's see what if there's anything else we want out of this. We could buy more um, bits, like, I assume maybe recipes use them. We could buy plus one scimitars and maces. We could buy a ring of protection. Increases armor's, where is armor class by one? Does not a stack of other deflection bonuses, but that could be good. Let's have a look at um, the only person who might use them. So, heavy shield is not as good as her shield. Okay. But it doesn't give her the minus two additional attack bonus, but she doesn't have any additional attacks anyway. It also doesn't limit her dexterity, this heavy shield. Okay, that could be useful. Um, we'll leave it for just now, though. Ring of Protection, I think, would be very good. Oh, we should sell these. Yeah. Uh, can I just... Yeah, there we go. That's where I want to go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I just click on it, and then both of them go in there? Weird. Okay. We're definitely selling all the rings, because why wouldn't we? Yep. Sell all of those. Ring of Protection seems like something we should buy. Actually, that's going to cost us money, so... Yeah, I was thinking, it's really good! Yeah, that's what it would cost us money. We could buy full plate mail for our, um, for our tank. Or half plate. Both of those would be fairly good. Full, full plate mail is a 9 armor class. That's good. That would make her severely strong. She currently has banded mail, but yeah, it's, it would cost maybe a little bit too much. I, I want to buy food. Food, food, I think, is our top our top priority. I like. Oh, okay. I don't really want to buy that much food. Is there a shift click or something. Oh, okay. If you double click, you buy everything. Hmm. There doesn't appear to be a way to buy a certain amount, opposed to just clicking slowly, so... Prepare yourself for some exciting gameplay. I think we're going to spend pretty much all of our money on food. Actually, that seems reasonable. We'll be have about 500 gold. 23 food puts us at a lot of food. Let's see, how much food do we have? Uh, we now have 25, there are 5 of us, that gives us 5 rests. That seems good. Yeah. Uh, let's head in. We can meet the men from Restov. So, uh, Keston Garrus. Greetings! Keston Garrus, the mercenary from among the associates of Jaman de Aldori, nods, uh, nods to you as if you've seen each other in Restov just yesterday. He noticeably limps and his clothes are bloodstained. Keston looks grim and focused as when you first met, but this time you can see a hint of excitement of the hunt in his eyes. I've got some urgent news from Restov. The Sword Lords have become aware that our mutual acquaintance, 
Tartusio is spying for Paytax. Looks like he plans to gain a barony and Aldori support only to later give these lands under command of his... Only to later give these lands under command of his real patron. Some of this needs a grammar check, but that's okay because it's an alpha. King Iver, Iveretti likes to have others pull the chestnuts out of the fire for him. Keston winces. Lady Jamandi ordered me to capture Tartusio. We were following his trail when this damned mist fell. Because of it, first we'd lost our way, then got right into the bandit ambush. Alas, almost all of my men got wounded and cannot go further. So I ask for your help. I'll point on the map the place where Tartusio was supposed to be. Capture this piece of scum and bring him here. Restov will not forget this favor. So Tartusio was a Pataxian spy? The sly bastard has caused us some trouble, that's for sure, Keston frowns. When he showed up at Restov and announced he'd like to take part in the competition, no one suspected anything. Yes, a gnome, yes, a sorcerer, so what? Some of my men even bet on him against you, Baron. Oh, we're, are we, is he now just calling us Baron? I guess because we're the only person in the contest, we are Baron? That makes sense. It was the overconfidence that was his downfall. Tartusio's henchmen, as it seems, were thinking they could safely meet with Pitaxian spies in the town's seedy underbelly. But Restov is the ancestral home of the Aldori, and Lady Jamandi is respected by the aristocracy, the common folk, and even by those on the other side of the law. We got a message from the slums. A good friend who wished to remain anonymous suggested that the sword lords should take a closer look at a certain guest from Pitax. Jamandi immediately sent for me and ordered me to capture the spy, then Tartusio himself, all without causing too much noise, of course. I reckon Ayurveti wasn't particularly pleased to hear of his agent's failure. A nasty grin crosses Creston's face. Okay, um, so what can they hope to find in the stolen lands? Pitaxian spies are much like magpies, grabbing everything they put an eye on, information, treasures, artifacts, and this time King Ayurveti had a chance to get the entire stolen land region at Aldori's expense. I'll give you advice for the future. Be wary of the Pitaxian king, he's a snake of a man. Um... So, Garrus is the name of a noble house in uh, Rivoy, isn't it? You're a noble then? Uh, no, because I clicked the wrong button. Oops. You're a noble then. Uh, don't, don't worry about me just saying farewell two seconds ago. Used to be. Keston cringes as if he ate something sour. It's just a name now, nothing more. The Garrus are a noble family in Brevoy. We already know where Brevoy is, it's where Valerie is from. They own several mines in the... Goloshkin Mountains. My father, Evan, is a cousin of Lord Howland Garish. Keston frowns. But he is not my father any longer. In any case, I brought shame upon my name and was punished accordingly. The family disowned me. I fled to Restov and led the life of a simple mercenary until I met you, Baron. Um, so what did you do to get exiled? An uneasy grin curves Creston's lips. Fair enough. The prosperity of the house and the honor of the name must be above all for Garrus. I was betrothed to a widow from another noble house. This union was of great importance to the family. However, three months before the wedding, I met a commoner girl, gentle and pure. Three fell in love with each other. I would rather, I would have rather died than leave Tania, so I decided to break off the engagement with my noble bride. I could not expect what would follow. My father was furious. I put a love affair above the interests of the house. He expelled me from the family and ordered, to, ordered me to leave our lands under threat of death. And Tania, a shadow of a smile crosses Creston's face just to leave it even more grim than before. She had a seriously ill mother to care for and could not follow me into exile. Thus, I was on my own, disgraced without a name and without love. 
Don't assume that I'm asking for pity, finishes Creston in a somber tone. Everyone gets what they deserve. Well, let, let's sympathize. I think you deserve a better fate, Keston. True love should not be punished. What is done is done. I want to know more of House Garrus and your homeland. Well then, ask away. Tell me of the lands you grew up in. House Garrus owns a number of valleys and gorges in the Galoshkin Mountains. The landscape makes these parts easily defensible, and they are rich in metal ores and everything else the bowels of the earth have to offer. It is a place of rare beauty, Creston sighs. When I moved to Restov, I couldn't get used to it for a long time. There was nothing but skies to be seen between the building roofs, no mountain peaks. Tell me of House Garrus. It is an ancient and renowned house, one of the most influential in Brevoy. A long time ago, the Garrus house entered a pact with the dwarf clan of Golka. This proved to be of great benefit to both parties. They supply the ore for our forges ever since. Lord Howland even took the son of a dwarven leader as his ward. Who would have known what this would lead to? Bren, Howland's only son, went missing in the mountains the same winter Brevoy lost the Rogarvia dynasty. Now, Tolin, uh, now Toval Do Golka, the dwarf's dwar the lord's dwarven foster son, is the official heir to House Garrus. The lad had it tough, though. Too many believe Howland could have picked someone of his own blood to be the heir. I reckon father had the same plan for me, but we all know how that went. Okay, so we've heard about this dynasty before that went missing. That was what Valio was talking about. He said there was a lot of turmoil. Okay. Interesting. Wonder if we'll find out a little bit more about that. But yeah, we've learned a little bit about him. What would be nice is uh, the ability to ask him to join us, but I guess not. He did, they did say he was injured, so I'm guessing that bed is going to heal us. I would hope that going to bed would heal us. Like that would count as rest. Or maybe just entering this area as rest. Does Fetlana have anything new? Uh, no. Not at all. That's fine. We'll leave. Uh, we do need to speak to our new companion, actually. Wherever she might be hiding. I assume she's going to be here. She's not over that way. She's not behind the building, is she? Nope. Uh, there's a Miri. Oh, there she is. Jathale. Who is undead, of course, as we have learned. Hello. Jatheo greets you with a nod. Speak. I would like to hear your story. Stories are boring and a waste of time. I have killed. I was exiled from Kionan. I died. I raised with Urgathoa's gift. That is the story. Who were you before the exile? This is amusing. I belong to a wealthy family. I held a high position in the court of Ayadara, the capital of... Kionin. Those horses are extremely distracting. I don't know if it's just me getting that. Anyway, they appear to have stopped. When my small wrongdoings were revealed, the trial was held in the same courtroom where I was trying cases and delivering sentences for several hundred years. What an awkward, awkward situation, isn't it? Um, whom did you kill and why? Family. Four. Jethiel's voice is calm and ordinary, as if she speaks of something insignificant. However, why is a much more interesting question. What is a thousand years worth if you cannot enjoy it like in your first ten dozen springs? The elf's voice sounds unusually vehement. I was thinking that, like, tried cases for hundreds of years. I was like, that must, they can't be human. But yeah, it's an elf. Interesting. Um, everyone considers elves to be ever young, but this youthfulness is but a mask, an awkward ritual gown. What is underneath? The dust of years lived, sanity, and jadedness. That's sati... Satity? Satiety? Anyway, whatever. With each year, the layer of this dust grows thicker, and will whom joys cease to surprise, they cloy as a dish you tried a thousand times. I have long searched for a chance to avoid this fate. Don't I, who knows the true taste of life, deserve a better lot than old elves running from the world? 
And I found a way in the ancient text of Urgathoa, a ritual involving the blood of my kin. Such a trifle that would make each day feel as a holiday created especially for you. The ritual gave strength not only to the body but to the mind and the soul and every detail, a sip of wine, a touch of silk enthralled as a whirl of sensations. Oh, how I miss this. My cousin was the first one I used for the ritual. It was not difficult at all to pass her death as an unfortunate accident, but the enchantment was not eternal. I had to find another object to conceal my trial. A third death made my family suspicious, and my deeds were revealed when the time came for the fourth. What a pity. If not for this, my unlife would have now been the life of burning pleasure, for I have dozens of redundant relatives. Did you kill innocent elves for entertainment and pleasure? This is abominable. This is an abomination. Yes, I have. You may use whatever high-sounding words you wish to describe my deeds. Say, abominable. Abominant. I hate this game so much with that. I, I, ha I stumbled over the word the first time, and it's just completely gone. See? Abominable. There we go. See? It can be done. Reasonable and honest would also be acceptable. Um, okay. Well, as much as I'd like to ditch her from our party, I do need her skills, but if we could ditch her, I think that would be a good plan. Do you have family in Kunin? Anyone who is dear to you? Do you mean someone I would hesitate to sacrifice? Perhaps my daughter. I would reject. I would regret the wasted efforts. The creature turned out quite well, as a properly trained dog or well-managed horse. All right, interesting. Is exile your only punishment for murder? For an elf, Jethael says pointedly, exile is a serious punishment. There is no second Tyonin in this world. Even I, who knows all of its hypocrisy, admit it. How did you die and what happened after? Jethael frowns. I don't remember my death. I admit, I was stunned by the sentence and showed weakness. I wandered aimlessly, not thinking about safety or sustenance. I was absorbed in despair. And then, then, I remember desolate rocks, a stone I lay upon, a convulsion, passing not, passing not only through my whole body, but also through my soul. Then awakening, cold, calm, my body overwhelmed with strength and a strange silence inside. There were bloody prints of bone feet on the stone next to me, the sign of the go of the goddess coming. A battle scythe lay near. That was the first and last time I heard Urgathoa's voice. Only three words. Hail the Inquisitor. That is all. She has not addressed me or replied to my calling ever since. I will not bother you with the story of how I tried to comprehend my new condition. I soon had a chance to put my new powers to the test. A group of my kin tracked me in the woods. They were insolent and paid for this. But I had to think about how to free myself from persistent chasers. A powerful protector from among the short-lived would help me. Sword Lord seemed suitable for the role. That is all. Tell me about your birthplace. I hope you are not ask I hope you are asking not of idle curiosity. Kayonin is the birthplace of elves. The other races are allowed there with reasonable limitations, usually only to green gold. This is an enclave for half-breeds and short-lived, a whim of our queen. I enjoyed going there sometimes, as to a wild beast show. Outside of this caricature of a city, Kayonin is a mixture of grandeur and sad remains of ancient glory. Next to the present graceful dwellings lie the ruins of monuments and fountains of the past. Elves prefer to live in small groups and secluded settlements. The most communicative and ambitious ones live in the capital, Idar. Life in, is the efforts of hundreds. Uh, life is the efforts of hundred-year-old infants to find a worthy goal, and attempts of thousand-year-old folk to entertain themselves in any way. That is all. It is not worth mentioning that even this gloom is manif even this gloom is manifold more tempting than anything the lands of this short-lived would have to offer. Okay. Uh, what is it like to be undead? Do you want to know what it means to me personally or what powers and limitations it imposes? Do you regret not being alive anymore? What an odd question. A shadow passes over Jethael's face. 
You surely know how to ask questions. I was just saying that. She says nothing for a long time. Two desires led me through life. To feel pleasure time and time again and to achieve perfection. Unlife brought me closer to the second one. I'm changeless, torn away from time. The chaos of world and even soul circle do not have power over me. But everything has a price. Most things that brought me pleasure during life have no sense now. How can I decide what's better? Hmm. You can only live for yourself. Such life and unlife are equally senseless. Agreed. Jethiel yawns pointedly. So how do healing spells, prayers and potions affect you? Yeah, that would have been useful to ask earlier. Dreadfully, of course. Your healers better stay away from me in battle. The undead are healed through interaction of negative energy. I can perfectly manage that myself. You don't need to sleep, correct? I'm spared from this bothersome need. I hope you do not take it as a reason to invent additional responsibilities to entertain me during the night. I spend this time meditating and addressing the goddess. Okay, fair enough. Tell me about your goddess, then. It might sound strange, but I know less than some about Urga Urgathoa. My transformation into her Inquisitor was unexpected, but I'll answer to the best of my knowledge. Oh, interesting. We have a knowledge world thing which we've passed, like a check. I wonder if there's been more of these hidden check, like knowledge checks behind. Anyway, so our knowledge world uh, is high enough to ask, why is the cult of Urgathoa forbidden in many parts of Gol Golorion? Uh, oh, that didn't appear to go right. Uh, it's not the game. Press it. Like, it's not like I'm pressing the button and the game is registering a different one. I'm literally just pressing the wrong button. Apologies, I'll, I'll pay more attention. Because many inhabitants of uh, Golo... So, it must be Golorion. Golorion are narrow-minded cowards. Some of them are afraid of the freedom granted by believing in Urgathoa. Others are scared of the wrath of Pharasma and her priests. Tell me about Urgathoa herself. Oh, I like the subject. Urgathoa was once a mortal woman, basking in life and all the pleasures it had to offer. The passion was so strong, Urgathoa rebelled against Pharasma, against death itself and its laws. After her death, she escaped the power of the Tomb Lord and returned to the world as a goddess and the first undead. Since then, she protects all who are ready to submit to pleasure with all the passion, paying no attention to worn out morals and the dictate of the law. Is Urgathoa at feud with the other gods? Not Urgathoa, but Pharasma is still trying to call her to order and Sarane to heal. Haha. <laughs> what does Urgathoa require from her followers? To enjoy dainty dishes, caress the enemy's suffering. What a wonderful religious obligation, isn't it? Okay, enough of this. Uh, what made you follow me? Curiosity. A need for a reliable ally. You see, I am to understand what my goddess desires from me. But Urgathor gave me Inquisitor powers without declaring her will. I'm waiting for her reply or a hint, and suppose that meeting you was not accidental. Besides, Jatheo cringes. I assume that several assassins from Kinyoin, uh, Kayonin, still pursue me. They didn't risk attacking me while I was under the patronage of Aldori. They are unlikely to attack me while I have reliable allies like you. Why do these murderers follow you? I don't know. They can't be sent by the Queen. Even though I'm considered an outlaw, my punishment was exile. It's not customary for elves to contrive their own laws. My attacker shouted something about threat and blood. I suppose this is a separate group of feeble-minded zealots. Or personal revenge. Is that the end? Oh. Well, that's not the end, obviously. Uh, yeah, we've, we've done that question. Um... Is that it? Oh, okay, so that doesn't lead anywhere anymore. I guess that is the end of the conversation. Okay, well, these people had a lot to say. Uh, let's head out of here now that we've got some more food. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to quickly save so we don't have to run through that again. Uh, I think we can run out this way because it's a little bit quicker. Uh, I think we've spoken to everyone as well. Right, let's go find somewhere to go and kill something. Uh, yes, of course, we're taking everybody. Let's go. And let's see where we're going next. Right, so, there's where the pine patch is, so that must be 
Is that where the person we need to kill is? Prove your worth. Uh, it doesn't say. Okay, that's fine. I, th I think that's where it is. Yeah. Uh, so we could head down that way, or we can head to Nettles Crossing, which is where another one of our quest is. Let's go there. We had a, we had a dream about it. Let's head down there. Let's see what's going on. Well, we know the path to this locate. All right, let's head down here. We can see the path to the location. We've got the dot dotted line. Oh, we failed to sneak past. Well, I guess we're fighting. We only get like 10 XP per enemy, I think, from what I was seeing in the bottom corner. So, uh, this isn't uh, great to be in fights. Oh, it put us at front again. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Valerie, please go charge at this thing. Uh, Amiri, please go charge at that one. Jathale, uh, charge at this one. We are going to take a step back. And Lindsay is going to fire at that one. Right, fire. Oh, there's another one behind us. Okay. Uh, switch to... Weapon set 2. Switch to weapon set 2. They take an attack of opportunity when we switched by the looks of it, but that's fine. Yeah, that works. We didn't even take any damage. That's nice, because they must have missed their attack of opportunity. Alright, we'll switch back to our bow. Uh, oh, I think we have to, to switch weapon, click on... Have we switched to our bow? Uh, oh, we already switched our bow. That's fine. I just want to check what order we're in again. Yeah, that's fine. That's where we want to be. Right, grab the wolf pelts. We can probably use them for something later. And let's leave this area. Right. Carry along the road. Alright, oh, it, it said at the bottom we can rest at all eggs uh, to remove some conditions. So I assume that resting at all eggs is kind of where you're meant to go. Like, you're meant to go back to all eggs regularly. Like, head out, do something, head back to all eggs kind of thing. Not just stay out in the wilds forever. Oh, we failed to sneak. Okay. Uh, I wonder what determines that. It must be based off some stat or something like that. Maybe it's just based off stealth. Bandit brawlers, bandit brawlers, bandits. Anything behind us? Not that we see, but that doesn't mean there's nothing. That doesn't mean there's nothing behind us. It just means we can't see it. Right, you attack that one. You attack that one. You attack this one. Right, Lindsay, attack the one at the front. Ragnar, attack the one at the front. There we go, that's fine. Oh wow, she's already killed one. These two are just on their own little murder spree. They're really good at this. Okay. Valerie's a little low on health, but I think we're okay. We might rest after we've been to nature's point. I don't think we're going to get another fight. She doesn't have a lot of health, actually. Maybe I'll use a cure wounds on her? Uh, we got eight. That's the max you can get from that, I think. That's really good. Fantastic. Right, uh, let's continue along to uh, to Nettles Crossing. Not Nature's Cross. Oh, yeah. We don't know where it is. Apparently. Uh, let's evade. There's no reason to fight them right now. I mean, we're not getting a ton of XP for fighting them, so let's not. Yeah, let's enter. want to find out what my dream was about. Okay. Don't see anything obvious right now. Uh, let's just drop a save so that we don't have to walk here again. What have we got? We got notice. Five coins to cross the river. Okay. Well, we'll leave that for a second. Can we head in here? Is there anything? Oh, there's this. Whoa, you see that? The small house burnt down a dozen years ago, but in here we got potion of cold resist, a couple of rings. Okay. Bloodstone, scroll of shocking grasp. Okay. We'll have all of that. This scroll is, I think, best on our, um, like, melee user, like a melee spell user. That seems good. Okay. Anything along here? No, that's the edge of the map. Let's head down. Oh, hello. Who are you? Davik Nettle. Was this not the person in our... This was the drowned man in our dream. 
The corpse's face is bloated from being in the water for a long time. The stench from its toothless mouth is so horrible it makes your eyes water. The hand, clenching a sinister looking spear, is covered with scabs. Suddenly you feel faint, as if a heavy, cold, wet hand is put on top of your head. Wet hair sticks to the skin, and trickles of icy cold water run down your face and down your shirt. You hear a hoarse whisper inside your head. There you are. Jatheo winces in disgust. Okay, so she can sense this, maybe? Was it you who sent those nightmares? Gurgling, deep-chested laughter pierces your skull, clouding your vision and suppressing your hearing. The other sounds are muffled, as if you hear them through water. You wag your head to shake off the apparition. Who are you? Davik Nettle. A storm of bright images passes before your eyes. A long time ago, your dialogue... Your dialogue partner came here from Brevoy? That, that doesn't make a ton of sense to me anyway. Uh, constructed a rope bridge, built a house and lived in it, collecting payment for crossing the river. Um, how did you die? You see a vision of a lovely spring day. Sunbeams feel warm against your cheeks. Three men come up to the house in front of the bridge. One of them is wearing an antler's helm. A stag lord. Angry faces, a quarrel, a glint of an unsheathed sword. Suddenly, the greedy, glistening eyes of the stag lord become surprised. The master of the house unleashed his dogs. You wake from loud barking and a bur- You wake- from loud barking and a burning smell. The flames are already crawling up the walls. A sound of breaking glass and bitterly cold night air. You are outside. You notice that the house door is blocked with something. In an instant, an arrow hits your shoulder. You hear the guff of ten throats. Uh, you run. You're already in the middle of the bridge. At this moment, the man wearing the antlered helm cuts one of the ropes connecting the riverbanks. You hear an ear-splitting scream. What do you want from me? You see a vision of a man wearing an antlered helm. You hear a muffled groan and the helm drops to the ground with a loud thunk. Your hands are covered with hot blood. Plenty of blood. Well, okay, sure. I will avenge you to the I will avenge uh, you by killing the stag lord. Okay. The drowned man who was motionless during the whole conversation nods his head at you. Come later. Take the spear. Okay, well, I'd better go. So what he's saying is if we kill the Stag Lord, we can come to him for a spear as a reward, I think? Hmm, interesting. Okay. Well, we'll maybe head back there. So this bridge will be destroyed. Yeah. That's, that seems to... Uh, sto story checks out, basically. Okay. Ooh, what we got here? Ancient Rosslyn Coin. Ah, nice. We'll have that. And, uh, yeah. That, that was fairly alright. Yeah, nothing went too wrong there. Do want to head back up this way. Then I think we should take this crossing over. Waterlogged lowland. A gloomy lowland passing into a swamp. Travelers avoid this place. The swamp is dangerous by itself. It also tends to attract monsters and other unpleasant creatures. Well, I'm not going there then. Uh, let's evade again. Yeah. Continue. Then we want to head down this way. You want to go to Pine Patch? That will be where the boar is. I think we probably have to rest after this, but that would make a lot of sense to stop right before we go to Pine Patch. Oh no. It's Cobalt. Okay. You go for... Th Wait. Yeah, you go for this Cobalt Archer. Jathael, go for the Shaman. Amiri, go for the Archer. Lindsay, uh, Shaman. Regnar, Shaman. Yeah, go. Oh, Critter 27. Oh my god. That is vicious. I love her crits look here. It's just straight up destroy. All right. They just explode. A sling? Okay. Oh, that's not going to do a lot of damage. I guess that's why we weren't taking that much damage from the fight previously with them. 
I don't know why we missed so much. I guess it's because uh, Lindsay doesn't hit very much and we had deadly aim on. I think we're going to rest here, aren't we? Yeah, let's rest. Yeah, let's rest here. Right. And head back to our camp. So, let's manage just a little bit here. So what do these mean? Rolls counter. The more rolls companions play in camp, the more fatigued they become. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Let's drag everybody off right now. So, we want to have somebody on guard, right? So she's already slightly fatigued? Is that, oh, she's our cook. No. So our cook should be uh, the person of the highest knowledge world, who's going to be our um, bard here. Hunter? That should be me, I think, because of five nature. Although, what's her nature? Her nature is only three. So, yeah, that should be me. Camouflager? That's a plus one. Minus two. Minus 15. So, plus one seems to be alright. Okay. And then, I guess these two are on guard, even though, like, there's no point to her being on guard, because she's no good at it. But that will make them fatigued if they're on guard any further. So that seems fine. Okay. Uh, let's begin resting. I think. Yeah. That seems right. Yeah. Okay. Um. So this is what we've got. Today a Mary... Um, Mary killed 10 kobolds, a troll, a hodag, and more goblins on than fingers on two hands can count. You know, I don't think the readers will believe us here. Well, obviously not, because it's untrue. But that's the truth. I could down them all easily, if only we'd find them. I mean, yeah, and if you got crits non-stop. Also, I don't know why our voice became very high-pitched, but that's fine. Hunter returned empty-handed, the cam camouflage failed, and the main cooking failed. But Lindsay did heal our three people with her healing things, and we got another selection of spells. That seems fine. We, we only really wanted to be at full health. We didn't really want anything else from this. Wait, we are near the... E I was about to say, we are near the X, aren't we? Because <laughs> we're really far away. I actually went so well, I'm just going to save. Right. And then, if we just head south, we should reach the boar, I think? Yeah. Oh no, there's Tusk's, uh Gutter's lair, so what's Pine Patch? Um, It's just a grove. I mean, we could head there. Uh, where did he say that, um, not that one. Where did he say my rival was? Uh, we need to find him immediately. It didn't say where he was, it just said we need to find him immediately. Well, we could go down to Pine Patch and have a look around before we do anything else. Let's do that. Okay, head this way. Yeah, let's enter. Maybe, maybe, uh, Tartusio is here. Maybe he isn't. We'll, we'll find out. It's alright. We appear to make enough money to pay for all of this resting, so... Really all I want to see. Uh Okay, examine the vicinity of the old sycamore. That's a lot of cobalts. Wait, is that Tartusio there? No, anyway. The cobalt with unusually purple scales stands tall, thus uh, topping his tribesmen by the head. Wait a sec. Oh, I get it. Listen to me. A dragon, huge sparkling, flew down from the sky to me and told a secret. A great relic that will win the kobold's glory is hidden somewhere in the vicinity. Enough of this excuse for existence. Search for it, search and bring it to me. He says in a suspiciously familiar voice of the gnome, Tartusio. Aha, uh -huh. I forgot gnomes are good at illusion. That makes a lot of sense. Dragon, glory, dragon! The voices of the kobolds are full of excitement. We know the mist of old, or old sycamore. They possess the mad chick sing. Very ancient. Um. Yeah, stop deceiving these poor fellows, Tartusio. 
Who is there? How? The fake kobold is almost jumping up in place. Hey, you fools. I meant tribesmen. Don't listen to the lies. I will bring you the... To the glory, just help me find the relic and stop this trickster. Oh dear. I don't want to fight unlimited numbers of cobalt. Um. Please charge that one. Please charge this one. Um. Continue charging. Do we only have to fight that many? If we only have to fight this many, then that's much easier than I thought it was going to be. That's really good. That is really good. Right. Let's continue forward. Oh, he ran away. Of course. Is this his old group? There's a uh, print on the ground near an empty chest. It looks like there was another chest of a similar size near this one. Well, they have some food on them. And a recipe for haggis. Uh-huh. So if I hover over that, it doesn't say anything, so. Oh, so we can copy this recipe. And then if we have the ingredients, we can make it. Oh, perfect. So we now, have now, we now know this recipe, so now we can, uh, we don't need to keep it. Okay, we can sell it on. That's good. Potion of resist cold. Uh, I have no idea who I'm going to give that to. Um, what I wanted to see was where we have all of our recipes, but I guess maybe we don't know where that is. That's fine. We can probably check at camp. I saw mushrooms and uh, I've been playing too many things where you collect mushrooms to make other things. So I was like, oh, we can pick them up. But no, we can't. So that's where Tartusia was. Now we need to go to the old uh, sycamore. Oh, this is our only route. Is this the way to the old sycamore? Like along this way? Looks like it might be. Okay. Head south. Yeah, perfect. Let's head to the um to Old Sycamore. Yeah, someone to enter the location. Let's uh, see what we've got here. Probably a lot of cobalts, if I had to guess. Unless he's uh, changed into something else. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Could be anything. I do like the uh, the idea of... Uh, it's it's kind of a little bit... Uh, it's a little bit more comical than some of the other games that like this. Like, well, at least I'm thinking of Pillars of Eternity, uh, mainly. Like this, this is a, has a little bit more of a lighter feel. Anyway, let's continue on. We're looking. Oh, there we are. Most evil rival. We have found him. Chief Suit Scale. Cowardly traitors. Sons of a pike. Return the relic. Coward, turn elek. Silly, silly, Cobalt. Go look for your relic. Go look your relic, your dungeon. Look under bed, under table. Ha <laughs> ha. Silly, Cobalt, have no bed and no table. Search your eggs. You lose relic and blame mites. Accuse queen. Lies. Chief, suit scale, not silly. The kobold leader shakes his weapon insulted. Lies, chief scale. The kobold crier diligently copies the words and gestures of the chief, swinging his weapon, it seems. Both groups are ready to start a fight. So warlike. It's like a miniature version of the Talden Imperial Chronicles. We're going to intervene. Stop. What is going on here? The little mite jumps in place. Stranger, stranger, you see, yes, silly kobold attack mite. Insult us, our magnificent queen. Lies, mite thief. Steal the relic from kobold. We revenge. Help us, stranger. Okay. This one requires natural. Okay, your battle is your own. I don't want to be a part of it. However, if you allow me to visit your domains, I'll strive to learn the truth. That seems about right. Um, we could ask them some questions. Let's ask the Cobalts. Hi, Chief. You call me Stoot Scale. Cobalt and Might live here long. Live peace. But Might Thief steal our relic. Thief, teal, lick. 
echoes the crier enthusiastically. How do you know it was stolen by the mites? Might sly, but Chief Suit Scale is more sly, I call. New shaman come, shaman Tartuk, no who stole relic. Good shaman. Tartuk, oot, oot. Jethiel rolls her eyes. And this is how it feels to be a judge, decade after decade. What is this relic? Relic. Key, Cobalt, take Relic. Enter Sacred Hall. Did you really attack the mites? Revenge, might coward. Cobalt, come, mites, run. We come, take Relic, go. They give us, give back our Relic. We give back there. So where is uh, Shaman Tartuk now? Shaman was Dungeon. Did not enter Sacred Hall. Might collapse our entrance, Cobalt Wrath. Yeah, but Tartuk is not real Cobalt. He deceived you. Suit scale, not stupid. He no real Cobalt, says the chief, insulted. All right. Um, Mites, I want to ask you a few questions. A small mite bows funnily. I, Seneschal Vatig. Here, our magnificent warrior queen. Pada! He points his large, at his large companion wearing a wolf hide. Queen defeat scary wolf battle. Dismember hundred enemies. Charm hundred hearts. Queen Bada! Allow you to speak her. May sit. We understand. He says graciously. Legs give way when see such beauty. My queen, why did you fight the kobolds? The queen of the might shakes her head regretfully. We live here long. Kobolds and mites. We live peacefully. Trade, friends, trade. Together hunt good shaggy animal. Got it, sweet. Long go, Chief Cobalt and our old king make good alliance. Two branch old sycamore. We take, charm, and give each other. This be relic. Cobalt have one, might have one. Not long ago, Cobalt come. Yell, we thief. Take our relic, silly Cobalt. Why do you need the relic? Two relic, they key. Give entrance to sacred hall. There, under roots, old sycamore, one key for cobalt, one key for might, each can go hall when he want, all fair. Why do the mites think the relic was... Why do the cobalt think the relic was stolen by the mites? Cobalt chief, silly, ugly, old, Seneschal and other mites giggle at the words. He, lose last mind, listen to his new shaman, Tartuk. Shaman, not so ugly, badass, smacks her lips in approval, but angry, sly, say bad thing about might. I want to catch him and make crown of his scale. Pretty crown, purple. Do you know where this purple scaled shaman is now? He prowled dungeon near our house. We see he wants, but not catch. Want find shaman, look underground. Okay. Well, I have no more questions for you, obviously. Uh, I'm going to try the requires natural. I see... I would appreciate com uh, my companion's advice. Let's try that first. Why support anyone? Do you think they're going to listen to you? Let's just batter the little ones, both kinds, and be done with it. It's up to you, but I have to mention that being close to such creatures might be dangerous. The Cobalt and Mites are aggressive, poorly organized, and insidious. It's better to exile them or not interfere with their arguments unless they entangle us in some unworthy deeds of theirs. Uh, I would like to say the battle is your own. I don't want to be a part of it. However, if you allow me to visit your domains, I'll strive to learn the truth. Let's see if that's if that works. Warrior Chief Bada. The Might Queen scratches the tip of her nose with the tip of her sword. We accept offer. Stranger, go peace our land. But we know truth already. Cobalt must pay for his stupid. Stranger, go find out about that Might. Thief! We hit might. Hit, hit. I call my shaman Tartuk from underground and hit them bad. Oh. Uh. Well, that'd be the end of the kobolds then, huh? Oh, we're just going to watch them fight forever? Well, I think that seems like a good point to end the episode. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.